Hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, session of answer writing and note making for UPSC exam in general and geology optional in particular. Actually, we had this session yesterday uh, where we talked about uh, this answer writing basics of answer writing and as well as note making. But due to some malfunctioning in the system, the part of note making could not be recorded. So I am recording this again. Uh, so that those who have not attended the session can uh, get benefited from it. All right. So I'll just brush it up what we talked in our last session. Uh, we talked about answer writing. We also talked about how important answer writing is to um, get a rank in UPSC and civil services as well as in uh, Indian Forest Services. All right. And we also talked about the essentials of answer writing, like we should be having uh, it's better to have our own handwritten notes, uh, which we uh, have to revise multiple times and how we can add uh, diagrams and maps and flowcharts uh, in our answer to get more marks. All right. We also uh, discussed, we also discussed uh, the standard, the basic format of answer writing and how uh, like it is, it is divided into uh, introduction then uh, we also talked about what could be the ingredients of introduction in general studies as well as in our geology optional we also talked about what uh, what the main body of uh, our answer should comprise of you know, like we talked about the importance of subheadings whether we should write in bullet point or uh, in paragraph all right how we need to underline the keywords and how we should draw the diagrams how we we need to box out the uh, diagrams all right and we also talked a little bit up on the conclusion part in general studies as well as in geology optional all right and we we also had a sample question where we attempted uh, to write this question on literacy variation and we tried to stick to these to this format like we had an introduction how we could express our presentation in uh, uh, these ingredients and then we had a conclusion so we we, we also so a sample you know, model answer, a sample answer for this question where we stick to the basics of the answer writing. All right. And then uh, we talked about how we should have a habit, especially for geology optional of, of habit of Googling the topics and seeing the Google images, uh, which will help us to get some simplified diagrams, which we can produce in the examination. And then we also learned about how we need to learn to draw the map of India and uh, the world map in about 30 to 40 seconds. And by practicing them, by practicing them for a couple of weeks, we can draw uh, those diagrams more effectively and in better form in like 30 seconds. All right. So we uh, try to uh, draw this outline of map of India as well as the map of world. All right. So now I think we can start directly with a uh, few suggestions on how to make notes, especially for uh, geology optional. All right. So like we have discussed earlier, it is best to have your own handwritten notes. All right. Like I would suggest or I would uh, recommend that we should have at least more than 90 to 95 percent of our uh, optional geology optional notes in handwritten forms. All right. Because uh, what happened, what is the benefit of having your own handwritten note is that if we'll make our own note, then we will have to write a lot. All right. So it will increase our speed as well as handwriting speed. It will also Im improve our legibility. We will be having an idea how our diagrams like sometimes it's very easy to see a particular diagram on a PDF or on uh, this PowerPoint uh, PPT. But when we go on to draw the diagram ourselves now we'll find it difficult like we, we while making it or uh, while making our own notes we can know where are the problems area where we are finding it hard to make the notes so handwritten notes are uh, pretty handy on these front also our own handwritten notes are very easy to revise you can revise a pdf ppt also but uh, I, I have found that we have our own handwritten notes they're pretty easy to revise all right and then we also talked about it's a good idea to make uh, notes on A4 paper or maybe a copy. All right. A copy is a copy, something like this. It is a spiral bounded copy, but these are blank pages. There are no uh, lines in these paper in pages. All right. 
why we should not make our notes on uh, line pages because an UPSC answer booklet, we, we, we will not get lines. Na? It will also be a blank paper. So uh, it will help. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, suppose this is a paper, we will struggle to write in straight line. All right. Uh, if you will uh, if you you will you will not have enough practice of writing on a blank paper you know your alignment would go a uh, bit slanted so it will not give a good impression so it is a good idea to make notes on blank papers only all right and it is also advisable that whatever notes we write we should try we should try to cover any topic on this like we should have the definition we should have the name of the geologist who has talked about that particular topic then our main content should also be in heading. We should have not uh, have underlined uh, keywords boxed and underlined in our notes itself. And we should strive for conclusion also in our notes if it is possible. So if we have notes in such a manner which are uh, which could be produced directly in the examination without much change, then it will save our or all right, it will save our time. All right, and it will give you confidence also. Definitely. The question exam will require some remolding. All right, we need to write a content, whatever we know, in the form which examine examiner is expecting. But uh, having your notes in this format uh, will help you to remold it more easily. All right. So, huh. so this is the most important thing I want to talk about. Like, what kind of notes you should have. So, uh, like, uh, I think we should. Everybody should have a multi-layered multi-layered kind of notes all right and these notes uh, will be made with time suppose i like uh, what i meant meant by this multi-layer notes is that suppose when you are reading a topic you are reading a geology optional uh, for the first time and you, you are reading any topic suppose you are reading isostasy all right so uh, like these are these are my notes when i read isostasy for the first time from the standard book from few of the YouTube videos or from anywhere. So what I did was see, I, uh, I hope you can see this. See, I, I had in this definition of isostasy. Then I talked about how this isostasy was discovered and I, I talked, uh, I wrote everything. All right. Then I also discussed the concept of ARI, all right, the diagrams, the, uh, what it talked about, then the defects in a, a theory of ARI, then I talked about the concept of Pratt, the diagram and then ev everything. Then I also talked about the concept of Holmes uh, vis a vis uh, isostasy, then global isostatic adjustment where this isostasy theory stands uh, within the platonics theory. All right, then some uh, defects in this concept and then some real life example where we can see these isostatic adjustments are happening. So you can see it is just a very small topic and I consumed about four, uh, about seven pages. All right. So you can also make such notes when you are reading the topic for the first time. Suppose you are doing the classes. So you can make such notes, whatever you are understanding, you can write everything. You can draw the diagram and everything. But these are only the first layer of notes. These are first set of notes. I would not suggest that you carry this notes till the very end. All right. So uh, what you need to do is suppose you, you have to write the civil services mains or the foreign services mains this year. Maybe you will write it the mains in January 2022. All right. So in next seven, eight uh, months, what you need to do is you need to cover the topic thoroughly or to cover the uh, syllabus thoroughly. You can make such kind of notes. All right. But after couple of revision after right uh, when you are ready to write your first test all right when you are ready to attempt the previous set questions all right so then you need to have the second set of notes which we can call the second layer notes so i can show you an example how second layer of notes can be uh, like these are uh, i don't have presently i don't have the other stressy second layer notes but i can show you through remote sensing notes suppose see these notes these are Actually, these are not mine. These are the notes which were shared to me by one of my senior and uh, he got ranked two in 2017 Indian Forest Services and he's presently serving as a DFO in Madhya Pradesh. So Anupam Sharma sir was his name. Is his name. All right. So uh, like see, these are his notes and this I, I can call them. These are layer two notes. All right. So in a way, 
these are not complete nodes of uh, uh, remote sensing but you can see he has covered a lot of keywords and uh, he have written almost most of the thing which he need to remember for remote sensing and this he must have done after uh, reading his basic remote sensing notes the standard text textbook or from wherever the uh, from youtube or from wherever he was reading this topic so after having read his basic notes three four times two three times at least he made such he, he made these notes so you know this is a very good way of making notes uh, suppose you you have a4 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 page you can simply you know fold it from in between and then you need you, this a4 one a4 page should cover at least four to five a4 pages and assuming this this one side as the first page in the second page and third in the fourth fourth page i can i hope you can see this so this is a very good way of uh, making notes short notes all right you see you can also see here here he has also done something similar so he has uh, he, he incorporated lots of diagram also like I, I i can zoom it for you so see he has he has a lot of diagram suppose if you have to write on the interpretation of a remote sensing uh, ima images which we'll do in quite detail in subsequent lectures so this is just an example so don't get bothered by the uh, content which is written on this page so see suppose he have written he have made i think 1 2 3 4 7 8 diagrams on such a short space so see what he has done that he has written all the keywords he has drawn the basic basic diagrams which he need to draw in the examination so there is lot of content within just this one and a half page all right this is one leaf and this is an, uh, just an half and leaf so this is i think the second layer of notes which we need to prepare after completing our uh, syllabus from whatever sources we are reading all right so what what is the benefit of such note is that these are very easy to revise all right and uh, these have all the important keywords which we need to produce in the examination all right they also have diagrams and uh, everything which we tend to forget is there in the, in these notes so when you will go for uh, if you have such kind of notes it 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 also makes it easy for you to attempt test suppose i have notes of isostasy all right and these notes extend to seven pages and when i have to write the general geology test now nah, I, I i may get some kind of friction and resistance that i have around 70 80 or 100 page of general geology and i haven't revised them and i'll do it once more and then i'll attempt the test so you know it it leads to a kind of procrastination you will delay the test attempting the test so it is a very very good idea and i think it is essential to have such short notes which you can you know uh, sit and you can revise in less time and with more mental you know mental um, thinking all right so these are second set of notes what i also want to recommend is a third set of notes set sub third set of notes suppose you have done this uh, you have given test and you have even revised your optional couple of uh, four or five times all right and then there is only a month or maybe uh, 40 45 50 days for the mains examination now what you need to do is you need to revise this second uh, set, uh, second set of notes uh, and you can make even concise notes like i can give you an example uh, this is not of geology but uh, this note is of general studies paper too all right so uh, what i was doing was i was uh, reading the current affair for paper 2 all right general studies paper 2 so uh, when i when i when i was done with you know the current affair parts what i did was i made sorry i'll open it again for you so when i was done with uh, the current affair of paper paper 2 general studies uh, what i made was Wait. I suppose so, uh, for general studies too, I made even more sh short notes. So this is just a simple leaf, one page of A4 size, and I tried to cover at least 25 topics on this page itself. So before doing this, I had uh, I had made notes of all these topics. I have uh, brainstormed all these topics, and I knew what are the important points which I need to. Uh, remember what are the keywords what are the key facts which i need to remember in these topics 
So suppose I, I can zoom it for you. Suppose the first is death penalty. All right, the topic of death penalty, which is uh, a, a important topic in our polity. So uh, I knew that if a question on this come or I, I, I am mentioning this topic somewhere in my uh, general studies, I need to I need to make sure that I, I cover these four or five facts. All right. So one is this Bachchan Singh case, which is a verdict of, uh, of, one, of, of one of the high court. And it was that rare, rarest of rare verdict. So I, I need to mention this name, Bachchan Singh case related to this. There is also a Law Commission of India report, 262nd report on death penalty. So I think this is also an important fact in it, which I tended to forget. All right. Then uh, there was also a fact that about 140 countries in the world, they have abolished death penalty. So why should India uh, not abolish or abolish the death penalty? And there is also a report of National Law University, which I was aware what was the content of it, but I just needed this a little keyword so that I can produce in the examination. So this is like how I, I prepared my final notes. All right. And uh, this is just an A4 page and I had about 25, 23 to 25 topics uh, written on uh, the simple. So I, I called it the third layer of my notes. All right. So if you, you can do this for geology also. Now, once you are done with your syllabus thoroughly, you have revised it, you have written a couple of uh, tests you, yourself or maybe at some coaching institute or wherever you uh, plan to do it. After that, in the last days, you can do something like that. All right. So it will give you a very good exercise to your brain when you are reading these notes. It will improve your recall power and it will give you more confidence that no, no, I can uh, write whatever you basically ask me in the given time in the given space. So I think this is what I I meant by multi-layered notes. All right. So, okay. Uh, obviously you cannot have multi-layered notes right now. You, you need, you need to be patient. You need to, you know, uh, with great conceptual depth and understanding, you need to cover your, cover your all, all the syllabus of geology. And then you have good understanding. Then you can move on to the layer two notes and the layer three notes. Uh, before examination. All right. So, uh, okay. So I also want to talk in general about geology, the geology as an optional. So like there were some messages on telegram. They were wondering whether is it possible to score 300 marks in geology optional. So I think yes, I can say that it is very much possible. There are people who have scored 300 plus marks. Like I think in 2018, uh, one of our senior, uh, I think uh, Mr. Amit Kumar, he scored about 305 or 306 marks in geology, all right, CSE. Uh, and he's into IS, right? He's in Tamil Nadu uh, cadre presently. And he, he was also a graduate from geology, all right. And uh, uh, there are, actually, there are other people from even non geology background who have scored very high in geology, like in IFS. Uh, I think uh, I don't remember the name. There, 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 there's a uh, friend named Naveen Reddy. He he got rank one, EIR one. In for IFS, all right. So uh, his score in geology was three hundred and fourteen out of four hundred. So like this is more than seventy five percent marks. All right, and this is like unheard in many other optional. Obviously, it has to do with uh, the policy of UPSC. UPSC thought maybe to reward geology more in that particular year, uh, leading to such high marks. Similarly, in that year only, the rank to uh, Arushishi scored 292, I think, out of 400. So, this is also, you know, tending to 75% marks, so which is a huge, huge score and which can, which help them to get such a good rank. All right. So, Scoring is pretty possible, but uh, pretty possible. Sometimes the absolute number might differ. Maybe the highest would be only 250 out of 400, uh, but that is the case with most of the optional. So it is not that scoring, uh, UPSC not rewarding marks in uh, geology. All right. And the another, another benefit from geology is, I think more than 70% question are from Previous or previous or papers. All right. So if you are done with previous or papers and you have good conceptual understanding of the topic apart from previous or questions, then and you have good short notes, you have memorized them. All right. Then you stand a very good chance of scoring very high. 
marks all right previous year questions even maybe sometimes up to 80 to 90% questions are previous year questions but you basically remove the topic in one way or the other so you need to be a bit na analytical also in the during the examination so but topic you can guess from previous year questions if you uh, can attempt about uh, not even 20 years but about 15 to uh, 16 years of la last years last 15 to 16 years of previous year questions of geology then uh, you won't get many surprises in the examination all right uh, one thing with geology is that you need to memorize a lot all right there are topics like stratigraphy even economic geology and then um, paleontology and uh, even mineralogy igneous uh, they are very conceptual very scientific Uh, but you also need to memorize them, and I think memorizing, if if you can memorize something and you can score good, it is a very very good thing. In fact, memorizing is like in when we were young, we we used to think that memorizing is a bad thing. We call it retardation and all that. But I th believe me, it is one of the best thing when we can do to score very high in exam like UPSC. We obviously we need to have a very sound conceptual understanding and uh, everything, but So ultimately we need to have the content on our tips all right and we can produce that in a very short time in the examination even i am aware that a lot of topper topper from other science subject like even like mathematics even they memorize a lot you know uh, they also have this constraint of uh, space and time so like if there is a problem in mathematics and physics which will take 24 steps normally so you know they cut it out cut it short to about 16 to 18 steps and they memorize the steps in between so this is this is an this is how they score a lot apart apart from the other hard work they do so memorizing is a very good thing so you know uh, you can only memorize when when you have very sound conceptual understanding when you have done the classes in a good way you have made your notes you have referred the a uh, few of the standard textbook you know you have googled the topic you have seen few videos you have a good feel of the topic uh, and then you need to simplify your content all right so suppose uh, like this is an subjective examination upsc civil services whether it is ifs or the civil services this this is not like gate where you know uh, you need uh, where the answer has to be you know very exact and very objective so this is a subjective examination and there here you can take few liberties to simplify for example suppose uh, we have this uh, suppose we have this ge geological time scale so suppose you are writing about cretaceous so the 65 million year is uh, ago from today is the end of cretaceous time period all right so and it is 145.5 so it is not necessary that you need to write always 65.5 and 145 5.5 you can actually round it off if you are writing cretaceous age you can even if you even 150 to 65 it is not a crime you know there is not there is a good chance that he will not deduct your marks he will award you the marks the examiner similarly even approximate it to 200 so this is a very simple suppose somebody is asking you what is uh, what is the age of carboniferous so you are writing gondwana stratigraphy or the formation of coal and you are talking about carboniferous era so you know you can just you don't have to be you don't have to be exact it it is 359 to 318 or something like that even if you are writing around 350 300 million year ago then it is fine all right to some extent so uh, all right so so we were here so we need to simplify and it is not about only simplification of facts facts obviously have to be correct more or less but it is also simplification of diagram suppose you are uh, reading paleontology and we have to draw a diagram of uh, trilobite all right it is a very uh, very common question trilobite is nothing we'll do it in great detail when we cover paleontology so don't get bothered about bothered by this name but the trilobite is simply an ancient uh, species which used to live uh, Uh, on the earth Supp like presently we have humans as one of the most dominant species all right similarly it was dinosaurs some uh, 65 years 65 million year ago and before that in the mesozoic era it was the dinosaurs which were the raptors which were one of the dominating species similarly in even the earlier times in paleozoic 
पेरिजोइक इज अ टाइम पीरियड इन जियोलॉजिकल हिस्ट्री इट वॉज द ट्राइलो ट्राइलोबाइटा राइट विच वॉज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट अबंडेंट स्पीशीज इट वॉज नथिंग बट लाइक कॉकरोच लाइक स्पीशीज विच इनहेबिटेड Initially, the ocean and then a lot of transformation as the life uh, evolved. All right, so it is an important topic in our uh, syllabus, and we read it a lot. All right, so there is morphology. So suppose you are reading a book or you you have read a PDF on trilobite, and they have made a very complex three D diagram of trilobite. So you, it is your duty that you simplify simplify the diagram without you know cutting on the schematic uh, details. so you can do use uh, google images or some other books or something like that to simplify your diagram diagram and uh, you know it will be easy for memorizing and reproduction in the uh, examination all right so short notes are very important like we just discussed in geology because it will help you to give a feeling that the whole optional is in your you know is in your hand all right so you can uh, write the exam the optional exam any day when the upsc asks all right and you can you need to be innovative also in geology like other subjects like other similar subjects you need to be innovative uh, which will make it easy for you to uh, revise uh, memorize the syllabus like uh, i can give you few examples like this this is nothing but this is vindian super group uh, in stratigraphy we read various stratigraphy of the various uh, deposits in our country so Oh, this is this is nothing but this is an example of indian uh, stratigraphy so it is very often repeated uh, question the, the question might be write a short note on the indian uh, stratigraphy all right so if uh, or they can write write a question on short write a short note short note on the life life in the indian times so then we have to cover the paleontological aspect but they often ask if, if even if they ask paleontological aspect it is like good that we also write this stratigraphy so these these terms like the same same re group that is s k moor that is k then it is riva group that is r and then bhande is b so you know you, you you have this simple s k r b so if you can remember this or maybe you can make a mnemonic out of it uh, so whenever you are writing vindyan you can very easily reproduce this uh, stratigraphy of vindyan so what i did was a uh, skrb i made some mm, very simple funny kind of mnemonic i made something like shikari bandar all right shikari bandar so shikari is a hindi word it means uh, hunter and bandar is nothing but a uh, monkey all right so s for shikari k for kemur b for uh, 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 here r for riva and b for bandar all right so i just made this mnemonic and i had it in my short notes also so in exam i uh, it was not an issue whenever i was writing with then uh, even paleontology of indian times i was always able to write this stratigraphy within 10 to 20 seconds and when the stratigraphy was asked i was and then i also uh, simplified it like see, see these are formations sometimes we also need to uh, remember all these formations so you know you need to have your common sense and right? maybe it, sometimes it is not possible to you know mug up every detail so sometimes even simplified stratigraphy can yield you up to 60 to 70% marks all right so say like you can see that there is a general trend this is a sandstone shale sandstone and then this is limestone then there is an alternative an alternating sequence of sandstone shale sandstone shale like uh, the coarse grain and the fine grain alternating deposition of these rocks all right and the same is the case here so you will see this this is the typicality limestone is the typicality and this is an important mineral and you, even by general studies we can see that uh, like in the central india near the vindhyan mountain area there are lot, there are lots of cement industries like and this limestone is one of the raw material for cement so obviously there has to be some limestone in the vindhyan ranges so it is the upper vindhyan range where we get limestone so this is just a fact which we know from common knowledge or from general studies knowledge which we can use here to memorize our content all right uh, just give me a minute i want to check whether this video is recording or not all right so so i just gave you an example you can make mnemonics uh, firstly we need to understand obviously we just cannot ratify this uh, 
who holds stratigraphy, we need to go through how what was happening in that geological time and how these were formed. But once we are done with that, you need to be innovative in memorizing all these things. All right. Okay. Uh, like I was discussing this, somebody in the class, in the session study was asking about marks or how you basically give mark sheet, how they, you know, uh, award marks and they were also asking about my marks. I, I, I thought I, I will share it in this lecture. So this, this is nothing but this is preliminary examination. They give both paper and paper two marks. All right. And uh, see, this was 2018 Forest Service means and this was 2019. So see, you can see my, these are, these are the marks. 2018, I, I got around 250 or this is 247. All right. So these marks and in 2019, my score was around 235 or 236. All right. So uh, actually, in a way, this 236 was was much better a performance than 247 out of 400. All right, because uh, this year a lot of people scored in excess of 240. All right, uh, in in geology optional, in the other optional also a lot of people scored in excess of 230 or something like that. But in 2019, I think the highest marks in geology uh, for this examination was 240 something. All right, maybe two. Uh, 240 something like that 244 maybe i think the rank 3 or rank 4 he got 244 so see it was not much far away from the topper and other optional on this 2019 they generally they also scored their average score was around 200 210 to 215 something like that so like if you are well prepared you can definitely get get a leeway of uh, 30 to 35 even 40 marks in Geology optional, and if you are prepared well, so it is not about the absolute number, but it is about the relative performances. So okay, okay. So we were talking about the mnemonics and how we can simplify our content, how we can memorize it. So the mnemonics are just one of the props. Similarly, this is the stratigraphy of uh, Gondwana, and uh, this is something which is very very commonly asked. So this is what we need to you know remember. This is culture series, then this is Tamura, then there is Panchet. Then Mahadev, Rajmal, Jabalpur, something like that. So it is TD, P, M, R, J. So you, you can make a mnemonic of your own and on this line so that you can remember it and you keep revising it multiple times. All right. So it will help you. you what I want to say is you need to simplify your content, uh, which will helpful be in examination. All right. Similarly, some other way, like I can also, I, I'm just sharing this one. Like this is, this is nothing, this is a sticky note sticky note. Na? So when I was reading this uh, silicate mineral for the first time and I, when I saw the uh, question paper, pay with a question paper, like silicate, stru silicate structure. All right. This is a very, very common topic in civil services as well as forest services. Like this is among those common topic, which you will be writing every year, like topics like meteoroids. All right. Topic like, like landslide or they call it as mass vesting something right? so you will write this topic invariably almost every year uh, in in both the examination then there are other, this is one of the topics silicate structure so uh, like i i uh, i knew that i i will have to write this exam in one way or the other in the examination so i just even simplified it and i ratified it after understanding everything how silicate minerals are formed about the crystallography and about uh, how to make the diagram that i just simplified it so that in exam i can save my time and i can reproduce it you know very quickly so like there are only six broadly six types of silicate structures one is miso silicate another is soro silicate like you don't worry we will cover all these things in our mineralogy class starting tomorrow in great detail so just don't get bogged down by these terms and if you don't understand them, I'm just giving you an example how you can simplify your notes and how you can memorize geology, the concept in geology and vis-a-vis uh, -vis civil services. All right. So this is mesosilicate, sorosilicate, there is ionosilicate, which we call chain silicate. Then there is cyclo or ring silicate, phyllotecto. So I just uh, like I just made this NSI CPT. NSI CPT is like something which I ratified multiple times. So whenever I have to write a question on silicate structure. I just have to remember uh, NSI CPT and for NISO, SORO, I know, Cyclo, Philo and uh, Tacto. All right. And I just made, wrote all, whatever the content I wrote in my notes, I summarize it in just a simple sticky note. And I just kept it in my wallet for a week 
and I whenever I was ready, I was I I just revised it. So after that week, even in the dreams, even in the night, somebody asked me about these secret structure. It, it was I, it was learned by heart by me. All right. See, I just simply I'm just giving you how you can simplify your content. So like in neuro and so uh, neuro silicate, the silicon is to oxygen ratio uh, in the crystal structure is one is to four. Now in soro it is one is to three point five. Then it is little more than one is to three. Four is to uh, one lap. You know, then it is one is to three. One is to two point five. One is to two. So there is also a trend. You can see the oxygen decreases as we you know, as we proceed in, in this order of silicate structure. And I had also had the example of the mineral. So I know that garnet and olivine. This is nothing but garnet and olivine. These uh, crystallize in mesosilicate, mesosilicate form. All right, epidote crystallize in sorosilicate form. Amphibole uh, crystallize in double chain. All right, pyroxene in single chain silicate structure. Then there is tourmaline, then clay, chloride, mica in phyllosilicate, and tecto is the famous quartz and felspar. All right, so all this information after going through my notes, after making the layer two notes, I even made the sticky notes. So that I can I memorize the at least the very common very important topic, uh, and I can produce uh, it very quickly in examination and save my time. So this is something you even you, you can follow, all right? And so like this is simply simple nothing but proboscidy evolution. Proboscidy is nothing but elephant, all right? In our paleontology, apart from invertebrata, we have to read the evolution uh, history and evolution uh, uh, evolution. Evolution uh, characteristic of three vertebrata. One is horse, uh, horse, which we call as equus, and the second one is elephant, and third is human. All right. So I know uh, they will ask one question on one of one of the three every year. All right. So even you can predict sometimes if they have asked about horse in civil services, they will ask about either human or elephant in forest services. All right. Or maybe if they have asked about Elephant last year in forest services, then it is almost certain that they will ask about humans. All right, in in this time, but obviously you should not take any chances. You should always prepare all the three, and you can you know memorize them. So it is like very simple. If you if you like this is something. This is nothing, but this is the evolutionary sequence of the elephant. All right, the ar the earliest elephant they call it the Moritherium. It was like much smaller in size with. With its present present this characteristic not not fully developed, then it got evolved into Dinotherium. I knew I knew in my notes what are the what were the characteristic of Dinotherium. I also knew the time period from the uh, Eocene to Oligocene and whatever the time period was. But I what was important for me was to remember these ten uh, twelve keywords. All, all right, if I'm able to recall these ten twelve keywords in the examination, I will get at least seventy percent marks. All right, if they ask about Evolution of elephant. Uh, other thing I can write. So I just uh, this is very small piece of paper. I just wrote all these keywords here. So this paleo mastodon it, it uh, evolved into mastodon. Then there was gomphotherium. Then there was ichthyodon. Then uh, there was prime elephant, which, which was the ancestor of the present two kind of elements uh, elephants we are having. Like we have African elephant, which we call as Elephas maxima, and then the African elephant we call this Loxodont africa. Now, all right. So this is something if you, you, you uh, like this is a way uh, like what i want to tell with this is having short notes or some innovative way of remembering and revising will will help you a long way in geology optional all right so like maybe this is the last thing which we can discuss in this session like similarly this is also nothing but a very very small sticky note and uh, like uh, like a lot of other people i also found uh, Attempting the question of crystallography very difficult in examination. All right, but I took all the pain and I uh, went through a lot of lectures on YouTube on some uh, courses, you know, and I also took the help of a lot of friends and I understand everything in crystallography. So I read about everything. I read about crystal system, crystal, all right, the motifs and whatever I could have read. I even visualize how many uh, plane of symmetry are there in all the crystal system, central symmetry, axial symmetry, all these things. But when I realize uh, Analyze the previous question paper. I I was like I could figure out that in crystallography there are certain questions that they keep on repeating. All right. So in those questions maybe they will ask about a certain crystal normal class of a crystal structure and they will ask us to draw 
uh, or two they will ask ask us mainly three things sometimes all right so they will ask maybe of uh, write a short note on the normal class of this uh, c for cubic crystal structure all right so in that we will have to write uh, what are the symmetry elements all right then the second thing they often ask is um, hermann morgan notation all right and the third thing they ask is stereograph of that so i thought ki this, this is something which i will always write symmetry element of a crystal system so after go, doing everything i memorize that there are six crystal systems that, that is c for cubic c for tetragonal hexagonal orthorhombic and then my uh, monoclinic triclinic all right so i just made again a uh, short that city is empty this is something i like uh, memorized by heart all right and then i i, I understood that there are nine plane of symmetry in cubic system there were five plane of symmetry in tetragonal seven in hexagonal similarly uh, omt all right so uh, then there there is one center of symmetry in 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 all the crystal system and this axis of symmetry it was you know something which which, which was little complex so it is very easy to understand all these thing in 3d uh, like it is just basic physics just basic uh, visualization but in examination like suppose they are asking you about hexagonal so uh, it will take some time when visualizing the axis of symmetry if you have not memorized it so in order to save time and to simplify the this this particular topic of stratigraphy i just made these numbers all right and i i just ratified these numbers so uh, uh, this number 957310 it was like ingrained in my memory then there was i know one uh, one center of symmetry in all the six and then i memorized this 344362 all right 344362 so i know this means that there were there are three a4 axis of symmetry in in which one this is the first na in, in cubic and there are four uh, three fold axis of symmetry and there are six two fold axis of symmetry don't worry about it we will go in great detail we will visualize all the axis of symmetries in you know in proper in, in class and everything all right so how uh, the everything but just you can come to this particular section of the video and just see whether it is helpful for you or not for remembering this axis of symmetry and everything similarly this uh, 1442 it means that in second in this tetragonal special of special system there is one a4 axis of symmetry and there are two uh, sorry four two fold axis of symmetry so i just made a number because uh, for me it is relatively easy to memorize the numbers and something so i just use this and i uh, it was quite beneficial for me in terms of saving time in terms of na uh, writing such questions so okay also there was a plan to cover this basic geological time scale but i think this this was this was something which was also not discussed in the live session so i am not discussing it right now we'll i'll take a session on this uh, simple basic topic some some other day so uh, i think we'll end our lecture here and i hope uh, you got an idea how you can prepare your notes about the multi layer notes importance of multi layer notes all right and how you can innovate in memorizing and pro mnemonics pro you know maybe sticky notes or you you innovate on your own whatever works for you all right i am just i was just trying to give you some idea about how you can you know effectively memorize and uh, prepare the optional so okay we'll end the video here i hope uh, it it is of some help to you all right